Good morning, dear friends. What a joy it is for us to enter into a new day. And God's faithfulness and mercy has played his, its, their role in bringing us into this new day. And God is so faithful and he will keep us through this day. So have no fear. And before we begin the activities and before we begin to travel here and there, let us sit quietly for a few minutes and listen to the voice of God as we listen to his word. Let us meditate together. I would like to continue uh, the study on the Lord's Prayer which we began yesterday. And this morning I would like to continue it. And we saw how Satan cannot tolerate God's presence. Satan is allergic to praise and worship. Adoration is antidote to the poison of a satanic oppression. So where there is massive triumphant praise, Satan is paralyzed, bound and banished. And that is why people of God must never hesitate to praise God in high volume. Praise the Lord is an expression commonplace in the vocabulary of all believers. But what exactly it means or what do we mean when we say praise the Lord? Praise is the act of expressing one's esteem of a person for uh, his virtues and accomplishments. It is to pronounce that person worthy of honor. But rendering praise to God is even more. The word praise has its origin in French. Praiser, which means to prize. To praise God means to prize God. And the word prize means to value, esteem, and to cherish something. During our times of praise, we cherish and esteem God with our words of adoration. Price also means to estimate the worth of. In praise, we mentally gather together all the fact we know about God and we put these facts into words. And first of all, we should praise God for his name. In Psalm number 115, Psalm number 115, verse 1 says, Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. Only in the New Testament, his full name is revealed. And his full name is the Lord Jesus Christ. That is his full name. And when he comes into a person's life, he will not divide himself and leave one or two part of it separate. He will come only as the Lord Jesus Christ. And the second, and, and it, it, it really means, it really honors God if we take time to prize the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 9, 6. We are told here, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. 
and the government will be on his shoulder. And he will be called wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and a Prince of Peace. And secondly, we should praise God for his righteousness. Psalm number 35. Verse 28. <clears throat> 28, verse 28 says, My tongue will speak of your righteousness and of your praises all day long. A man or a woman who is full of adoration and love and praises for God he will talk of the righteousness of God besides the talk of his name. Hallelujah. Righteous means meeting the standard of what is right and just. God is the standard. Hallelujah. And number three, Praise God for his infinite creation. If you take time today and read Psalm number 150, oh, the psalmist is talking about the mighty acts of God. That means the mighty creation of God. And then he is calling all his creations to praise him. The trees and the skies, heavens. And then he says, let everyone and everything that has breath in it, his nostrils, let him praise the Lord. And, of, and, and uh, fourthly, praise God for his word. Read it in Psalm 56. Psalm 56, verse 10. In God, whose word I praise. In the Lord, whose word I praise. Oh, and when you, that is why the word of God is so important both in our prayer and in our worship and praise. Our praises and our worship must be filled with God's amazing, wonderful word. And our prayer is, should be filled with God's wonderful word. And that is what gives, you know, when God hears his own word, he is delighted. Praise God. But this evening, up this morning, as I conclude this meditation, let us look into a deeper aspect of this prayer. The greatest concern in our prayers and in our lives should be the hallowing of the name of God. It is of utmost importance that God himself be revered, our reverenced, and glorified, and exalted. In Psalm 34, 3, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Glorify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together in our prayer and daily uh, walk. We must be intensely concerned with the reputation of God. His church, his gospel and his kingdom. Are we, when we live our lives in this world before others, 
Do we really remember whom we represent? We represent the almighty creator God who lives forever and ever, who lives in an unapproachable light and glory. Do we ever realize? And so that's why I say in our daily walk, we must be intensely uh, concerned with the reputation of God and his church and his gospel and his kingdom. To do something that uh, uh, bring a scandal on the Lord's name and character is hideous sin that puts God to open shame. And my friends, it is not to our advantage to put God's name into shame by our acts, by our words and our behavior. And so as we live, do we ever remember whom we are representing? Is holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And he is the one whom we represent in this world. Remember, and many believers are there. They are very careless about the fact that they have to re rep represent this God all the time of their lives. In their dealings, in their relationships, in their conversations, and in their desires, and in their will, and in everything that we do. Always remember, somebody is watching and we are influencing someone every day. And what kind of influence are we to others who are watching us? Prayer should be concerned with the kingdom of God on earth. And the kingdom of God on earth now. Now, what does it really mean, let your kingdom come? We are actually praying, Lord, let your reign, your rule come. Let your rule come upon my life. Let your rule be upon our, my family. Let your rule be upon uh, the church. And let your rule be upon our city. Oh, you, oh, yes, that is the meaning when you say the reign of God, the rule of God. And the one who rules us, controls us and he uses us for his glory and that is why uh, it is very important uh, a prayer should be that should be the greatest concern with, with, with in, in all our prayer to pray you will be done on earth means that we sincerely desire God's will and desire and purpose to be fulfilled in our lives. It is not my will, my desire, but it is God's will and God's desire and God's plans must be fulfilled in my life. And that should be the greatest uh, uh, thing in our life when we pray that your will be done on earth. We can easily discern God's will. How? In his revealed word. And through the Holy Spirit's leading us. What is the ministry of the Holy Spirit? To make Jesus precious to us. And then to let us know God's will in our lives. And the word of God reveals God's will. We don't need to run around asking, what is God's will for me? Will you pray? Why? It is there in God's word. Read and dig, dig into God's word and you will find God's will there. And the Holy Spirit is there to lead you into all the truth and into, into the plan of God for your life. And why don't we discover what is God's will for you in God's word? And depending on the Holy Spirit, he will give you the understanding. 
And with this, I hope that you will possess a better understanding of the meaning of the Lord's Prayer. He taught this prayer, this manner you pray. And as you meditate on what you have learned in these two days, I pray that you will have a better knowledge of the how to pray and what to pray for. And uh, in our prayer, what are we really doing? We are exalting God Almighty, His name. So let us praise God for what He is. Praise God for His name. Praise God for His righteousness. Praise God for His plan and purpose for our lives. And let us live to honor Him and glorify Him and to exalt Him. He must be above and over everyone and everything in our lives. May the Lord bless you as you live this kind of life by the grace of God. This is God's plan for you, my brother, my sister. And as you give yourselves to the Holy Spirit, let Him guide you, let Him teach you, and let Him use you. And you will be happy. This is a wonderful day. With this knowledge, live this day for His glory and have a great day. Amen.